Welcome to a new daily top ask reddit video. Today's topic. Ex homeless redditors, what was the scariest thing that you ever saw on the streets? NSFW. I was homeless back when I was 19. After a few weeks of sleeping rough I was approached one evening by a man dressed as a priest, at this point I had no idea if he was a priest or someone out to deceive me. Being wary of the priest outfit I straight away told him I have no interest in talking about God. What he said next has stuck with me ever since I am not here to talk about God, I'm here to make sure you are safe. We talked for quite a while until it was dark and that's when he offered me a bed for the night, alarm bells were going off in my head but he had seemed genuine so I went with him. He drove me to a house in the suburbs and asked me to wait in his car whilst he spoke to someone. A few minutes later he returned with another man who offered to let me sleep in his garage for the night. Everything inside me was saying this is a bad idea but I accepted as I had nothing left to lose. The garage was pretty standard, tools, workbench etc. Except in the corner there was a box spring and some blankets. There was a connecting door to the main house that the man told me he would have to keep locked during the night, he apologized but said he had kids in the house and couldn't take the risk. The priest asked if he could come by in the morning and speak to me, then went into the house the man. I don't think I slept at all that night, I was terrified. I had no reason to be afraid of either man as they had been nothing but nice to me, however after living on the streets for a while you come to learn that nothing comes for free and you shouldn't trust anyone. The morning rolls around and the most amazing thing happened, the man knocked on his own garage door to ask me if he could come in. This might not sound amazing but when you've been living rough with zero privacy, someone asking if they can enter your space, which is actually his space, gives you a sense of being human again, someone actually respects you enough to ask your permission. I spoke with both him and the priest every day for the seven weeks I slept in his garage. Between them they managed to get me into a subsidized efficiency apartment, think studio apartment but a lot smaller, got me a job and helped me get my life back on track. That was over 20 years ago and I will also be indebted to both of them. I still send Christmas cards to the man whose garage was my home and visited him two years ago for Thanksgiving. Sadly, the priest passed away a few years back but I guarantee that if there is a heaven, he got fast-tracked in. Whilst reading that ever sentence I was waiting for a nasty ending. So fucking glad that didn't happen. I wasn't sure it entirely fitted the question but I was terrified the first night, less so each night following but still wary, so decided to post it. Cold weather. I thought I was going to die one night I was so cold. I remember waking up thinking you need to move or you are going to die. This was the scariest thing for me. I ended up sleeping in buses, burning stero, it's like jellied rubbing alcohol that burns for a good while, I would try to constantly be walking cause if I stopped I'd probably fall asleep and die. I also sometimes rested under a bridge from time to time. One time I fell asleep under the bridge and I woke up finally feeling warm and cozy and thought it was nice to finally be able to rest. Then I realized that it's way too cold for this and I can't move without that frozen fingers pain everywhere. Struggled real hard to get my stero out and could barely bend my fingers enough to light it. Like my hands were nearly useless. I'm really glad I woke up. Edit, thanks for the gold. Edit 2, all you guys telling me you're glad I woke up got me feeling all warm and fuzzy inside. I haven't felt this happy to be alive for a long time. Thank you. I'm glad you woke up too. I remember waking up every half hour to make sure my dog was still breathing. Cold fucking kills. This feeling is really scary, I don't think I've been as cold as you, but once I was camping in the cold, soaked, with no warm clothes. I woke up every 30 minutes with a different part of my body getting numb, having to readjust just to go from very cold to less cold. When I got moving the next day it felt like I was cold to my core and it took hours to warm back up. I will never forget that feeling and now take the cold way more seriously. FYI was not homeless, just hiking with little to no preparations. I had a similar experience. I think some time before dawn my body started to shut down. I had this vivid dream that my two best friends were sitting next to me watching me shiver. I felt feverish, hot and cold at the same time. One was shaking her head and saying I'm so sorry, I'll miss you so much, and the other was crying. I remember feeling terrified and thinking this is how I'm going to die, it's so nice that they came to watch over me and then I passed out. I woke up and the sun was up, it was almost 9am. It took me almost 6 hours to feel warm again, as if my core was thawing all day. 
made it to my car eventually and went home super anxious. I'm very lucky I didn't have the energy to strip off all my clothes that night, probably would have died of hypothermia. Edit the more replies I read, the more common I realize these events were. I was 20 in winter in Wyoming and I'd never been camping when it was that cold out. My lowest temp camp before that was closer to 30 degrees and I figured it would be pretty much the same. It was about 0 degrees Fahrenheit that night and there was a wind chill. I wanted to wash my face in a stream before bed and slipped, so the lower right side of my body and my hands forward slash forearms went in. I was camped in a dry rocky area and figured if I took my outer layers off, the inner layers of clothes would dry and warm up in my sleeping bag. I was definitely wrong. Now I never go hiking without a full set of extra clothes and a travel towel, lesson learned. I had an emergency foil blanket in my bag and didn't even think to use it. There is a drainage ditch in my area that the local homeless people tend to bed down in. A few years ago, when I found myself destitute, I spent one night down there. That night I witnessed a Molotov get thrown into another dude's spot which led to a huge fire that ran rampant through the area. Yeah, I bought a tent the next day and started camping in the local mountains. That's insane. And here I thought GTA is far from real life. I was just sleeping around where other guys in my city sleep, then just see some teens stabbing one of the homeless guys multiple times, ran away from there, never turned back. Man there are some fucked up people out there. I hope somehow that guy survived. My buddy is a public defender only for 10 years until the state pays his loans. The stories he tells will never stop super sick you. Every time we eat dinner together I always have to be reminded to close my mouth because my jaw is always on the table in disbelief of how fucked up society is out there. Bottom line, get a public defender in your circle of friends. Your dinner parties will never be lame again. I was staying in a homeless shelter that had a men's side and a woman's side. Most of the men were convicted sex offenders. In the eight months I spent in that hell on earth, I was friends with three women who were raped by some of these men. The truly scary thing. The women were actively discouraged from telling anyone what had happened especially the police. If they filed a report with the police, they were permanently barred from the shelter. That place, one of the most celebrated in my state, regularly has the mayor and governor drop by, is the most evil place on earth. ETA, the Pine Street in Boston, Ma. It just didn't occur to me to say where, cause I never expected many people to see this. Also, holy fuck how did this become the top comment? When I saw this post, people were talking about murders. I wasn't even sure I about posting my experience, because of a complete lack of murders. And tie for my first awards. Please tell your local news organization. If they can interview some of your friends who were raped, all the better. Authorities might not give a shit but a hungry reporter sure as hell would. Report them. People who had been homeless way longer than me. Trust me. There is nothing scarier on the streets than the meth couple who this has been their day in and day out for one thou sad zed of days. People joke about meth, but unless you've been around chronic users, you don't understand how truly scary it makes people become. Like a whole new level of animalistic, impulsive, not right in the head people. I fucking hate meth. Fuck meth. I know plenty of drug users that can do drugs casually for recreation, except meth. I never met anyone that done it more than a handful of times that did end up crashing and burning. Lost a few people, they're not dead but merely a meth-fueled husk of their former selves. Snow. I'm a big, scary dude so I never had trouble with people picking on me or whatever, in that sense the streets were safe to me, but seeing snow for the first time that year just made me cry and panic. It was too early for snow, I wasn't ready for that type of cold and was hoping to be on my feet again before the winter came. Beautiful thing like snow just fucked me up in so many ways. Hope things are looking better for you now. Thank you. Oh yeah, I turned it around. This was seven years ago. I was making art from trash and selling it in markets and posting it on the streets, I became pretty known for it, I've traveled the world for exhibitions and worked with very famous artists. I'm still struggling with money, I work non-stop and now with the virus I'm struggling even more, but I rent a house with a big garden for my dog and own a car. I'm far away from that life and I don't think I'll ever be in that position. Edit. Really humbled and overwhelmed by all the messages and positive thoughts. My IG is at Glil247 for people who want to check out my work.
All my love and best wishes to you, wonderful Redditors. Waking up to a shotgun being pointed directly at my head. I wasn't truly homeless but had no money or bank card and was trying to get back to my parents following nearly being strangled to death by my ex. The actual fight happened whilst we were out so I had no spare no clothes, I'd left my wallet at his and only had a dying phone on me. I tried getting money for a train but only really managed enough for a bus fare to the next town and decided to try hitchhiking. Late into the night I gave up and managed to sneak into a barn where I was able to get comfortable enough to sleep. Turns out I didn't close the door enough and the farmer found me in the morning after taking his gun to investigate. He woke me up, I think he coughed loudly, with the gun painted at me and I nearly shat myself. It asked me what I thought I was doing in his barn and quizzed me on how I got in. He asked to see my arms before he lowered the gun and he started chatting. He was quite nice though and after talking to him for a while he took me back to his house and fed me and let me have a shower. Glad your encounter was wholesome and not as fucked as the other stuff I'm reading here. Every farmer has a shotgun. Farmer with shotgun is the most powerful being in the universe.